government allow that? Well, um, Deng Xiaoping had took over power a couple of years before that. So China had just started to gradually open it up. But the, when Ben Stevenson gave the invitation, they didn't think anything about it. They didn't think that was going to happen at all. And, but very quickly, they got a phone call from Deng Xiaoping's office, says, have you done anything with these two scholarships? They didn't know then George Bush uh, Sr was actually the first ambassador to China, but Barbara Bush was on the board of the Houston Ballet. So it was that connection we actually likely got to America. And we didn't speak a word of English. It was just everything was, you know, lost. We were totally lost, almost like in space. You tell a great story about going out to dinner when you first got here. That's right. We were, we were <laughs> taken to this wonderful Chinese restaurant in Houston the, for the very first time in my life. I had Peking duck. And the <laughs> night, the food was just keep coming out. It was the most delicious food we ever had. But of course, we were told by the Chinese officials says, when people speak to you or ask you questions, if you did not understand, you should never say the word no. You should always smile, nod your head, say yes. By the, time, by the end of the evening, we were just utterly stuffed. We were so full. Of course, still, my director kept asking us, I said, are you still hungry? We didn't understand a word he said, so we smiled, nod our head, and said <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you kept eating and you enjoyed that, huh? Uh, it was wonderful. I mean, <laughs> you know, what, what actually, even though we had this incredible food, but what I found was so disturbing was the amount of waste. Yeah. That night, there's so much food left on that table, and it just broke my heart. I just thought, only if I could put it all into a doggy box and, and take it back. What to, must to you have thought, though, of this land when you came here, from what you'd come from before, from what you'd been taught about what you'd find here? Had you already learned it wouldn't be that, or was it total culture shock? It was a total culture shock. The, uh, what we saw did not fit into what we were told for, for the first 18 years of my life. It just did not fit. Yeah. And at first I thought, well, you know, the streets are clean. I thought they could really sweep the streets to impress us, these two Chinese communists <laughs> coming. But they cannot simply build these huge high-rise buildings, these enormous highways, just to, to impress us. And, uh, and uh, when people give us flowers and cowboy hats when we first arrived in the Houston airport, I just thought, should we take it or should we not? Should we refuse it? Because <laughs> we thought there must be some hidden agenda behind those smiling faces behind this cardboard hat and the flowers because we did not trust right. the American people. When did you come to trust? Because I know where your story is going and we'll get to that in a second, but there had to be some trust before you were going to do what you did next. That, uh, that realization of that propaganda, um, you know, for 18 years of propaganda we, we had in China, uh, came to me gradually. And very uh, you know, gradually I realized that was really all wrong. And that was uh, served one purpose only, was to serve Mao's, uh, you know, sort of political uh, propaganda to, to get us all become very, very faithful for his uh, cultural revolution or for, for his, uh, you know, communist revolution. So, uh, but as a young communist youth party leader, uh, which I was, and that, that realization was devastating because that means 18 years of my learning, of my beliefs, had all crumbled right in front of me. I feel like there was a carpet or the floor have taken away from me and just right underneath me. So what do I need to believe? Right. And it was, it, was, it was a really, really um, in, you know, enlightening uh, moment, but it's a devastating moment at the same time. Yeah, and then you decide through, I guess, a series of events to stay in this country. That's right. How did that come about? Well, I fell in love with this uh, beautiful young American girl who was also a student at the Houston Valley Academy. And uh, she was my first love, which was just so beautiful. And uh, for the very first time in my life, I felt I could love somebody freely and being loved freely. Which back in China, if I fell in love with somebody, I have to truly go to my political advisor and say, may I talk about my feelings to that girl? And I was not allowed to go directly to that girl to express my feelings. So by having that love, and it was incredible. So I married her, and I went into the Chinese consulate in Houston to explain my marriage. And they were supposed to let me go in a few minutes. We'll be on our honeymoon. And finally, suddenly, I was dragged away by four guards and locked up at the consulate for 21 hours in this dark room 
uh, was you know, interrogated uh, and uh, was, I was threatened for my life, but also I was so worried my parents and my family in China, back in China, was going to be in trouble. Well, let me understand this. If you got married, did you assume then you'd be able to stay in this country, or were you still responsible to go back? I was, I, my intention was to go back to China with my wife to live, uh, live in China, dance in China for half a year, and be able to come back to the West to dance for half a year. But the Chinese uh, consulate official, I think they felt personally responsible for what I did, and they were really scared that they, would, they, were, going to, uh, they were going to get the blame. So mm -hmm. they did not want to hear any of that. They said, no, 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 we decide your fate. We decide your life. What are you going to do? You are not going to marry that person without our blessing, which was, had, had that deflect, uh, direct conflict with what you know, the Western uh, in a society and the rights of uh, you know, human rights uh, uh, was all about. Right. So, uh, so you know, eventually, I was released unharmed. And apparently, the FBI had surrounded the consulate for uh, at that time, which I didn't know then, and uh, uh, Vice President uh, George Bush was involved because Barbara Bush was still on the board of the Houston body. By that point, I got to know them quite well, and uh, and then eventually the Chinese government, the top Chinese government, says re release him. And the funny thing was that the Chinese consulate had all in Houston had all unplugged all the telephone calls. By the time they discovered this lawyer, Ben uh, uh, Charles Foster, had been making phone calls to the State Department, to the federal judge, and all that. And there was a federal judge court martial ordered uh, for them to produce me at the court the next day. So there was a huge amount of pressure from the legal side and from the political, uh, the government side of it. So eventually, and I, I was released, and I was. Amazed, I walked out, I walked out of the, that consulate alive. Yeah. And it was the darkest 24 hours of my life. And the worst of all, the thought of never be able to see my beloved mother, father, my brothers, and friends back in China was just unbearable. When you walked out, when you were free in a sense, what was your understanding of what your relationship would be allowed to be with your family back home? I never thought I would ever see them again. And in fact, I uh, did not see them for five long years, and those five long years, the sadness, the tears had virtually nearly, you know, sort of uh, you know, suffocated me. Yeah. And the, 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 and, and the guilt, the guilt of the unknown, the maybe my action, what I did had implicated them, had, uh, you know, caused them trouble. And I wrote them a couple of t letters and didn't get any response, and I thought well, I better stop writing because otherwise you know, I would, call, I would continue to cause any problems uh, problem for them. But, but uh, I think China had opened up so much, uh, and eventually I discovered they were, they were not implicated at all. Really? Which was just amazing. Were they told of what was going on? Did they know the struggle you were going through? A uh, few Chinese officials went paid a visit to my parents a few days after uh, my defection, and uh, they were basically accused my parents for have such a bastard of a son. And my mother turned around to them and says, you took my son away at age 11. You were responsible for his upbringing, for his education. Now you have lost my son. I want him back. And, you know, she, she, was, she was heartbreaking because she did not know whether her son was still alive or dead. So, uh, so for her, she felt she had lost her son, her sixth son, forever. And I was their hope. I was their hope of being able to come back to help them suddenly. I had disappeared from the earth. Yeah. Did you ever question whether it was all worth it? During those five years when you had no contact with your family, was there any guilt in what you had done? I think it's always uh, the best thing to look at, uh, you know, things in hindsight. And now looking back, I think uh, everything, what I have done, had you know, worth it. Right. Uh, however, it was a, a great sacrifice, a great pain, great... Uh, um, you know, sort of a struggle to get to where I am, um, not just to live, be able to live with the, those sadness, those fear, these nightmares for all these years, but also the struggle to be the best in the dance world and to really to do the utter best to become one of the top dancers in the world. Coming from being a Chinese, Bali is not something natural, it's not a peaking opera. And you know, it's, it's a Western art form. So for me to be recognized to be one of the world's top dancers, it was not easy. 
have yeah. put a lot, a lot of hard work, uh, you know, a lot of dedication into it. When you look back on your life, which I guess you had to do recently when you wrote all of this in the book, and you look back on your life, do you realize that's the same person? Can you, do you feel a connection or does that seem like just a story you know now? Well, I was amazed when I was writing my autobiography to reflect upon my journey. I was amazed that that was all me. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I still think, did that really happen to me? Did I really go out of the Chinese consulate alive? Did I really, was I really allowed to see my parents? And I still remember that day when they came so to see me performing ballet for the very first time ever. And the plane, airplane was late to arrive in Houston. And um, the people, uh, friends, picked them up from the airport, rushed them through the uh, Houston traffic with the police escort over to the theater directly. And they held the curtain for 20 minutes. We were doing the opening night Nutcracker. And uh, when they walked in, by the time they walked in, the whole audience knew my parents were arriving from China to see me dance for the very first time. When they walked in, the whole audience started to applaud for them. And my poor mother just started sobbing from that moment onwards. Yeah. It was just really an emotional moment when they came back on stage during the intermission, the three of us looked at each other, just utterly speechless. We were just hugged in a pool of tears. And it was just, it was the most uh, special moment in my entire life. Well, it's funny you talk about your culture shock. I can't even imagine what it was like for your mother to all of a sudden be in the midst of all this because her transformation happened immediately. That's she right. Had she, had years. That's right. She had her first car ride, her first train ride, the first airplane ride, and walking into a Western theater for the very first time in her life. So it was just for them, uh, the culture shock was even, even, even bigger. Well, Lee, thank you very much for telling this story. It's an amazing tale, and you've finally written it down. I hear there's a movie in the works, possibly? Well, there are quite a few offers, uh, film offers on the table at the moment, so I'm quite excited about that well, aspect of things. The best of luck to you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Lee Swinsing. To order a transcript, call 866-652-3378 or send $6.95 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest.